So I've been talking about uh, fishing through uh, historical documents, and I'm using right now one by the poet Maya Angelou, a description of a 1940s, 1950s fish fry in uh, uh, Stamps, Arkansas, a rural part of our Arkansas. And this is an African-American event, but certainly we know that many of these events were, even during the period of Jim, Grow, Jim Crow, would be uh, attended by all members of society, both black and white. So let me uh, read a little bit of the document and then uh, do another historical improvisation. It is take the document and then build on it from different aspects of what we know about uh, 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 Southern foodways and American foodways. Reading, the summer picnic, fish fry, and the clearing by the pond was the biggest outdoor event of the year. Everyone was there. All churches were represented, as well as the social groups, the Elks, the Eastern Star, Masons, Knights of Columbus, and the Doors of Pythus, professional people, Negro teachers from Lafayette County, and all the excited children. Musicians brought cigar box guitars, harmonicas, juice harps, combs, wrapped in tissue paper, and even bathtub uh, bases. Proven fishermen and weekend amateurs sat on the trunks of trees at the pond. They pulled in the struggling bass, the silver perch from the swift water. A rotating crew of young girls scaled and cleaned the catch, and busy women in starch aprons salted and rolled the fish in cornmeal and then dropped them in a Dutch oven, trembling with boiling fat. She goes on to say, The amount and variety of foods would have found approval among the Roman epicurei. Potato salad crammed with hard-boiled eggs, homemade pickles, and chow chow cold and cold watermelons. That's the, that's what I want to deal with today. That last section, the amount of variety of food, and then the different food that's described. That is the side dishes. We have potato salad, we have homemade pickles, chow chow, and cold watermelons. I just want to talk about this as my historical improvisation for today. One of the things that we know is that the description of this 1940s 1950s event. It speaks of preparing and preserving food in the 1940s, 1950s. It's interesting. I was listening to uh, a woman who grew up in Wisconsin, and her father uh, had a business selling pies out of his out of a converted vehicle, and he would sell baked goods, particularly pies. And she talked about refrigeration that the family had and did not have even in the 1940s. And this particular piece uh, speaks of that. So, for example, we talk about the uh, the pickling of uh, of um, of homemade made of homemade pickles. It speaks to um, what people could do or could not do, and that many people grew a great deal of what they produced, including things like cucumbers, which would then be taken and, and canned and pickled. So that's one aspect of it. But also, it speaks to things like potato salad. How did one? Uh, uh, preserved potato salad on a hot Arkansas summer day in say May, July, or August. Um, again, you're talking about potato salad more than likely made with mayonnaise, but there are some vinegar-based potato salads. But how did one keep that uh, both preserved and keep the keep the food sanitary? It often wonders. It reminds me of uh, of the preacher uh, that I knew who, when challenged about the kind of food they were eating, they said, "Well, you know, I." The Bible says uh, you can bless your food with prayer. And I said to him, you know, God will not sanctify foolishness by you praying over it and making bad decisions. So it just reminds me of that whole sanitation and food pres uh, preparation and, and preservation uh, during the 1940s. Uh, the homemade pickles. Certainly, again, gardening and preserving your food was quite common in most of these societies. So you're not talking about uh, canned pickles that might have been sitting on the shelf. Uh, could be canned pickles that were sitting on the shelf, but not of a store, but within your own, own pantry, which was quite common. And we know that Maya Angelou's grandmother was a person who both kept a subsistence garden and regularly did canning. So that's one of the things that she talks about. Another product that she would can would be chow chow. Many people don't know what chow chow is. That chow chow typically was taking the last of your spring garden uh, and or your garden you planted in the spring and then by the fall, the very end of it, you would take the last fruits of the garden and take it and you would chop up the, the different vegetables, things like, like cucumbers, pickles, excuse me, cucumbers, hot peppers, peppers, and different cabbages and things. And you would, you would chop it up finely and then you would pickle that and you would can that. That was known as chow chow. And chow chow was very much like a chutney, I guess, in other cultures and societies. It was served in the South with, with a variety of different dishes, uh, meats as well as vegetables. And then also it was served 
uh, in many variety of meals. It's not a breakfast or lunch or a dinner. It served many different things. And it was often one of these things, again, that represented food that you could keep year-round. You'd can it because you didn't have necessarily the refrigeration, particularly at an outdoor event like a fish fry. So again, I think the document speaks a lot about food preparation, sanitation at this particular time, and strategies that people had as they produced things uh, out of their own garden and they canned it themselves and preserved them themselves. I will have links to uh, particularly things like Chow Chow, which I've done stories around Maya Angelou's discussion of Chow Chow with related recipes on how to actually create your own Chow Chow, as well as uh, I'll have a recipe, of course, to potato salad different ways of making potato salad and related stories so you'll find all that on my blog foodasalens.com and again this is the last segment on uh, looking at the fish fry from my angel's perspective of night from 1940s 1950s uh, Arkansas again there have been four parts in this series you can always go back on YouTube and see more of this or go on directly on my blog foodasalens.com and see uh, the link to the series on improvisations and fish fries Thanks for listening.